All right, Steve, Rob asks, uh, thinking about doing the Love and Respect Marriage Study by Emerson Egerix, I don't know how you say that. Mm -hmm. uh, is this study a good one that follows scripture? You know, I've never, I've never looked at the Love and Respect um, study, and uh, so I can't tell you definitively that um, it's good or bad. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, what you need to be doing any any time that you're involved in any kind of Bible study um, is checking it out and seeing if it goes along with Scripture. And so uh, uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 11 says that those at Berea were more noble than those at Thessalonica because they search, well, they received the word with all gladness of heart. And then they searched the Scriptures daily to see if those things were so. And so this is this is what I do with everything that I get um, uh, when I'm when I'm going through a video series, you know, uh, if somebody's recommended it to me, um, I'm going through and I'm paying attention to what the guy says. And, you know, if what he says is lining up with the passage that he's teaching from, and hopefully that's what's happening, he's teaching from a passage, then you're OK. It's you know, it's golden. But if it's if it just becomes nothing but man's opinion and nothing but um uh, you know, and and specifically, if it becomes something that's contradicting what the Bible actually says, then it's not going to be any good. And and so usually it's a combination of those two. So uh, when I talk to people about this, I you know I, I tell them uh, listening to a Bible study, including mine, um, or reading a book, or you know watching a video series, is like eating chicken. You eat the meat, you throw away the bones, and you know they're. There are some types of meat that I want to eat, and there's other types that I want to stay away from. If it's too bony, got too much gristle in it, you know, that kind of stuff, not interested. And so uh, there there have been some video series that, you know, I'm, I, I go through, uh, you know, a first study, and there is so much nonsense in it that yeah. I'm just like, it's not worth it, yeah. you know. Um, uh, but then on the other hand, uh, there have been some studies that I've listened to that it was just nothing but meat and it was you know good stuff and again it's because it goes along with what scripture says and so that's how you judge anything yeah. so, so sorry i couldn't give you a better answer on that so totally not related to you know his question and stuff this is just my thought on what you're saying but this is what i see a lot is people will instead of like the bereans where they sit where they search the scriptures daily mm -hmm. to see if those were if what he was saying was true and we're talking about paul mm -hmm. Instead of doing that, they go to their favorite Bible teacher or usually, you know, maybe it's their pastor or whatever, or it's a guy that they trust. Mm -hmm. And instead of going to the Word and going, okay, this guy's saying this in his marriage series, let me see what the Word says. They go to their pastor and goes, hey, is this guy a good Bible teacher? Mm -hmm. And they're relying on one guy or one book or one author or whatever that they trust for whatever reason for their authority. Right. And the danger is, well, what happens if your pastor or the guy that you like is wrong? Yeah. And you and you wagered your whole life, your whole marriage on his opinion instead of God's. Right. You know, and I, yeah. I don't know. I, I can see it when you're a brand new believer, because sometimes yeah. it can be overwhelming and you're like, ah, I don't know where to find that in the Bible. Well, Pastor Steve knows a lot. So what does Pastor Steve say? But at some point you got to transfer on to the, what the Bereans were doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and um, uh, you know, I try to be careful and I try to pay attention to what I'm what I'm doing and what I'm saying and, and making sure that the information that I give out is 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 good stuff. But, you know, I'm just a guy, you know, and, and so, uh, you know, ultimately um, what what you do is you go to the word. It's it's God's word. You know, it, it's like we the, the Bible is is nothing but God speaking to you. And so it's this really cool thing where God's given his opinion on all kinds of issues in all kinds of areas. And it's something that you can actually trust. And uh, we need to not be lazy about that. We need to be going to the word of God and finding out what it says. And again, like you said, there, there are times when it's, when, it's, you know, when it's totally appropriate to go to somebody and say, you know, what do you think of this? Mm -hmm, sure, you know? yeah. And um, uh, I've, I've done that in my life too. Actually, I still do that. You know, I'm, you know, there, there are so many books out there. There, there are so many, you know, things out there that are being promoted and, 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 uh, being sold, um, that I, you know, frankly have a hard time. I, I don't like wasting my money on a stupid book. I want to, I want to spend my money on something that's good, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm done with buying dumb books and then throwing them in the trash. 
and and there are a lot of dumb books out there you guys and so um you know a lot of times if i'm if i'm going to get a new book or if i'm going to look at uh, some new series then um, I want a recommendation from somebody that I think knows what they're talking about. And if I get a good recommendation from a couple of people, then I'll go and pick it up, you know. And and but then I'll judge it for myself, mm-hmm. and I'll go through and, and look at it. And I, you know, I've done that. You do that with movies. You know how that is? Yeah. It's like uh, you know, I've seen the the uh, trailers for a movie and it looks really good, and I find out that somebody that I know went to see it, and I go, so you know, Matt, what do you think of that movie? You go, oh, it's awesome, it's awesome. And then I go watch the movie, and it's lame. You know, and I come back and go, what's wrong with you? It had this in it, it had this in it, what are you talking about? And so, uh, and then on the other hand, there, you know, there, there are people that um, uh, I talk to, and they they have the same taste as me, and they know what I'm looking for, and they'll go, no, it's worth it, totally worth going and seeing it, and stuff. And then I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, and so there are people that I know, that I love, and I absolutely respect that I do not ask them about movies because every every recommendation they've given me was just lame you know, and that, that kind of yeah. thing and so it's the same you know it's the same thing with this stuff but ultimately what needs to happen is like Matt said you got to you got to be paying attention to what the Bible says and so we have a resource that's just awesome in the Word of God and um, you know you you if you know the word, then what's going to happen is uh, you're going to uh, keep yourself out of all kinds of problems. You're going to keep yourself from wasting your time, wasting your money, and um, actually uh, getting caught up in, in uh, a lot of the nonsense that goes around Christian circles. So, uh, Another thing that I see with that, too, is a lot of times people will, like you said, they'll be reading book to book to book, and their whole theology is based off of you know Christian bookstore. Right. I've even seen this um, lately with guys like one of my favorite historians. His name's David Barton, and what he what he was doing is he started writing books based off of the original documents that he was collecting. Mm-hmm. And when he was coming out with some of the viewpoints, people were freaking out, and they're like, "Where'd you get this from?" And he would pull out the original document, and what he was showing is that a lot of the uh, books that were out were being quoted from another book. Mm-hmm. And what that did over time is the history became what some guy started. And then over time, that was authoritative. And so this guy quoted it, and this guy quoted it, and this guy quoted it. And what you end up doing is reading a whole bunch of historian books, but they weren't what the original author said. Right. And a lot of people do that with Christianity is where they read this Christian book, this Christian book, and they have their theology based off Christian bookstore stuff, but it was never really in the Word of God. It was what one guy quoted and everyone else followed. Yeah. And, and some of this stuff can, can just be crazy. There's a, there was a book that came out uh, a while back um, uh, called The Purpose Driven Life, mm-hmm. you know, uh, by Rick Warren and, and uh, Purpose Driven Church and, and that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm not going to pick on, on the books, but basically what he did was he took Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, and um, he put that all that stuff in book form. Mm-hmm. And the church just goes wild over it. And and it's like you know if you wanna if you wanna grow as a Christian you gotta go to church if you wanna grow as a Christian you gotta read your Bible if you wanna grow as a Christian you know you gotta pray if you wanna grow as a Christian you gotta be a witness and and you know that's been in the Bible for like yeah, two thousand years you know and and so I had a lady come up to me this one time when when that was all the hot topic and she said Steve why aren't we why aren't we going through the purpose driven life why aren't we doing that book. And I said, well, first off, you know, I don't teach people's books. I teach the Bible. And then secondly, you know, when I was talking to her, I go, well, what's he, what's he saying in his book? Well, you know, you need to go to church. And I go, do we teach that? And she's like, well, yeah. And I go, okay. What else? Well, you need to read your Bible. Do we teach that? Well, yeah. Oh, okay. You, you need to be in fellowship. Do we teach that? You need to be a witness. And, you know, just went through the whole list of things. And I go... Um, that's, you know, I just showed her the passage in Acts and she'd been around long enough to, you know, to have been around when, when I was going through and I was emphasizing that stuff. And she's like, okay, I get it. You know, it's, it's just the Bible. And so in that case, it's a good thing. Um, I think it's a pitiful thing that um, millions of those books get sold as if it's something awesome (laughs) <laughs> it's out of the book of Acts. You know, it's like, pick your Bible up and read it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that simple. And um, obviously you have a situation where churches aren't, aren't emphasizing 
what the word of God has to say about you know life and godliness and all the things that the Bible says that we're supposed to be doing to get to get those things. Right. Yeah. God's promises contain everything that we need for life and godliness, is what it says in Peter. So Okay, I have one yeah. more I have one more thing on that. And this is what I think is cool about this. It's so much better to get something, to get truth straight from God mm-hmm. instead of someone else. And this this just happened to me recently is um uh God was showing me something in my marriage. And so I told, I went to my wife and I'm like, this is what I think that we should do. And I made some points. And then the next week I, I was going through and I found this uh, guy online and uh, I text my wife and I'm like, well, apparently someone wrote, already wrote a book on the two <laughs> things that I thought that God was telling me and made, you know, did a, th- this thing on that. And it was so funny because she texts me back and she's like, yeah, that's the book that I said we should go through like two years ago. And I was like, oh, you know, so it was, it was clear that God was, you know, doing stuff, but it was so, it's so much better. And I think that over the course of your lifetime, you really hold on to that and can look back on it and go, I remember when God told me that, mm-hmm. not, I remember when I read this book or whatever. Right. It's so much more yeah. powerful when you get it straight from the yeah. Lord to you. And that's the, that's the way that it's supposed to be. You know, most of the stuff that, that I remember is, uh, as far as uh, my understanding of the Bible is, is not stuff that I learned when, um, when I necessarily went to church or when I picked up a book. It's stuff that, that God spoke to me when, I, when I'm going through and reading it. Yeah. And um, there are issues that come up, uh, you know, off and on over the years where I'm like, oh, what, you know, what was the answer to that question? And I go to a book and I, you know, pick it up and I go, oh, yeah, that was the answer to that question and, and that kind of stuff. And then I forget it again. And part of the reason for that is it's, it's not something that's coming to me, you know, necessarily straight out of the word and something that God showed me and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. All the stuff that God showed me, it's just like ding and it sticks. Yeah. And so that's, that's again, what's cool about going to the word itself and, and finding out what it has to say. Now, needs to be some humility about that because, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've seen some, some situations where uh, people ha- don't have a, a good grasp on, on the Word of God and how it to go, goes together and, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, they're a brand new Christian deciding that they've come up with some new doctrine that nobody's ever heard of before. And um, you can know for sure that if God is showing you something, he's already showed it. You know, there's been like lots of godly people over the last 2,000 years who are way more godly than you, way more godly than me. And God's been talking to people for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so generally speaking, I'm not coming up with something new. There's not going to, there's, you know, there's nothing new under the sun is what Solomon had to say. And so when I think I've come up with something new, um, a lot of times I'm hitting the books to see if somebody else agrees with me on that whole issue. And there have been some times when I thought that the Bible was saying something, and I looked up a couple of commentaries and found out that you know, my understanding of the passage was absolutely wrong. Sure. Didn't know what the Greek was saying, you know, that kind of stuff. And so needs to be some humility there. But uh, um, once you start getting the handle on, on what, the, what the Scripture has to say and how it's, how it's put together, this is your source. This is where you go. And, um, and even before that, obviously, um, you just need to have some humility about it. So, yeah. All right.